Mr. Chairman, dear Jill, dear David, ladies and gentlemen. This summer, 50 years ago, I came the first time to France. I went to uh, the summer school of Lycée Carnot in Cannes, and I fall immediately in love with the country. Also, because I strongly remembered the fate of my family, my ancestors had come from France, as French Huguenots, and so in a certain way, a circle got closed. The following year, 1964, I went with my form to Paris. One morning when we visited uh, the center of Paris, uh, I saw President Charles de Gaulle from a distance of two meters when he left with his wife the uh, service in Notre Dame. What has, uh, yeah. And during that time in Paris, one night we wanted to uh, go out. Uh, we were in the eastern part of Paris, uh, long distance to go to the more interesting places. And when we left the youth hostel, on the other side of the street, we discovered in a window four or five girls in the second floor looking down to us. And with our very poor French, we started to try a conversation with them. And all of a sudden, a man uh, appeared in the window and we were ready to, to get, uh, get on flight. But he uh, said, what's going on? And uh, we said we would like to invite the girls, but one of them is saying she is engaged and they cannot come. And then the man said, uh, from which country are you? From Germany. You girls go down. I have been a forced uh, labor uh, man in Germany. They treated me well. You go out with the Germans. <laughs> so two minutes later, the four girls dis uh, ap appeared on the street. We had a wonderful evening. And I tell you, we brought back the girls unharmed. <laughs> wonderful, unforgettable evening. <laughs> what has changed in the meantime uh, in 50 years? The great success story for me is uh, that the peoples have come together. This is an, an incredible story. I re remember the first years when I traveled uh, France. Uh, they kept a distance, uh, even when you spoke their language. Today, it's completely different. The lessons of history are understood in both countries, and the French have made an extraordinary move. Also, thanks to... Uh, German-French uh, German cooperation on the level of use, the exchange of the cities, and, uh, but the knowledge of languages is, is poor. 20% uh, of Germans uh, say they understand uh, French or speak French, which I doubt, and on the French side, 15% say it. I doubt that also. <laughs> uh, the problem for me uh, in the long run, and, and this is also my personal experience in professional life, I find that uh, the Paris society, the elite uh, is self-centered. Still, uh, these are uh, uh, following analysis is about 10,000 people uh, who over generations have the control of the country. For me, this is still a problem, this uh, inward looking part of French society. So there is a big gap between what I'm saying about the behavior of the French population and of the political class of the country. In comparison, the, the German society still is more open. When you are good enough, you can make in Germany still uh, uh, fantastic careers from, uh, from bottom uh, up to top. I give you two, uh, three examples. Kurt Beck, who just resigned as minister president of Rhine and Palatinate, by, by training, by formation, an electrician. He told me uh, once, as, he, as with his country is bordering France, he said, impossible for me to make a comparable career in France. A second example, René Obermann, CIO of uh, Telecom. Uh, he started to study two, three semesters. Uh, then he started... Uh, a career on its own, and today is a, a chairman of one of the most uh, important 
industries of Germany. And the third example, the former chairman of Deutsche Bank, Hilmar Kopper, an apprentice in the, uh, in the bank one day, making the full career up to CEO. I don't see comparable careers in France. In other contexts, I will come back to that. What I observe uh, as a journalist at the same time over this long period is that the picture of France in Germany uh, is getting less precise. Uh, during the last years, whenever the French were engaged in military things, a good part of my colleagues uh, starts to write and continues to write Grande Nation. Uh, this, from a German perspective, is not a very nice expression. And uh, from my uh, professor in Freiburg, uh, where I studied Romance languages, I know that Grande Nation uh, was used by de Gaulle only once. It is nothing uh, the French would say themselves. So I tell my colleagues in Germany, be cautious, be aware, uh, be sensible, and uh, treat, uh, treat the, the French well. So I, I observe a, a certain rise of cliches. And uh, maybe it has to do with uh, a development when I gave you that introduction because it's, uh, it shows the difference, such, such a situation today unthinkable, because uh, to meet uh, somebody from the other nation is no pro problem today. But when you are getting used to it, it can be boring over the time when you have no new ideas, no new initiatives. And that is, for me, one of the problems of French-German partnership these days. Uh, I observed in Germany during the last weeks uh, very often the title uh, Mariage, uh, Mariage d'Or, uh, Golden Marriage. Be cautious with it. Uh, when you are married uh, 50 years, you have not very much time before you. So <laughs> this is not a very good picture. What I, what I see is that uh, the exchange uh, in uh, civilization is going down, uh, much less interest for the literature of the other, much less uh, interest for, uh, for film when I was 20 years old. Uh, La Nouvelle Vague, uh, the, the French film, was very important for me. I don't see something compar comparable, only recently this success, but this is another story. Uh, this film about the handicapped, uh, yes, yes, which uh, was in, in France uh, an extraordinary success, but also in, in Germany in terms of film and, and books. But this is uh, a singular case. And also music, Chans the chanson uh, uh, in the 60s, uh, in the radio, in TV. Uh, you could hear it every day. Uh, today, I could wait for you, uh, with you for hours uh, listening to a German radio station to hear a French song. So something has happened, not to the, not to the advantage. As my, uh, the, the speaker before me said, uh, uh, there are two very different countries, two, uh, two, very, two very different na uh, nations, and I would compare the job. Uh, here I have another accent li uh, than you. Uh, I see... Uh, I see a very important role for the two countries to organize uh, themselves for the future. Uh, the context of Europe is important, but in certain situations it's too large. I, I think there is uh, an ongoing obligation for the French and the Germans to organize their daily cooperation. So in a, to put it in a picture, it is as if you work uh, uh, in a cathedral to rebuild it, to restore uh, a cathedral uh, whether you take Reims or Reims or Cologne, you have to work on it every day. And it's, it's the same with the French and the Germans. Uh, you, you never can be sure that things are going automatically. You have to organize it. It's a daily job like it might happen in Airbus Industries, where the Germans and the French with the others are working together, or in the German-French Brigade. 
For me, the French, and this is least a compliment, they are the stronger Europeans. They are thinking strong, more strongly than the Germans in historical categories, where, and they have the will to lead. Uh, as we have seen uh, on several occasions during the last years, uh, if I would be a French, I would be really disappointed about the, the Germans in military things, and I fully understand that they are now looking uh, for closer cooperation uh, with Great Britain or with the United States. And uh, in Germany, uh, when the Mali operation uh, started, one thing uh, has been overlooked. Uh, that day had a, a bigger amplitude because uh, not only in Mali a military operation from the French started, but also in Somalia and an aircraft uh, or uh, an helicopter carrier, uh, carrier was uh, at the coast. So the French, uh, unfortunately, the operation in Somalia failed, but you could see the will. Uh, and you have to understand uh, from the German side uh, uh, French symbolism to show that one is able to have two very delicate uh, military operations in another continent. Um, thousands of miles apart. Uh, this has not been seen in, in Germany, but I find it important that the French at least wanted to give that signal, uh, which was a signal for their own country, but also for the other powers in Europe. And uh, I'm sure that the Americans uh, have clearly seen it, uh, but it was not discussed in Germany. Uh, the deficit in military terms in, uh, in Germany goes on. It's still a consequence of the Third Reich. We, have, we had the tendency for a long period to overdo in military things, ending in the catastrophe of Hitler. And now we are going to the, to the other side. And uh, the old uh, uh, quotation from Churchill seems to be true. You have either them here or down at your feet. So uh, what I want is that my country finds a middle position in these things. Uh, and, and this means for me to be with the others. Uh, remember 20, 20 years ago when the Germans made the first attempts to be uh, in Normandy when uh, Allied landing was commemorated. Uh, now practical situations to have Normandy in, in, uh, today would be there, and Germany is not there. And I, I personally regret that deeply. On the other hand, uh, uh, we have still a liking to go our own way when it's in our interest. Uh, I, I think for Europe it was a near to a catastrophe that after Fukushima, the Germans uh, took their own conclusions and did not care uh, about Europe. Not about France, but also uh, not about the energy problems of Europe. And I say that because uh, Europe has started, as you said, uh, in the 1950s with cooperation in, in energy. And this was a clear will to overcome the national, uh, uh, the national uh, position in energy, energy questions, which very often had led to wars between Germany and France. Very briefly, uh, uh, German econom uh, economical dynamics uh, are an opportunity for, for Europe, but also a danger because uh, we, have, we have problems to, to, to explain it to others. Uh, the fact that the Greece, uh, Greeks are showing the German swastika is clearly showing a lack of uh, communication. And I think this is a German problem all over the places. I take that very seriously because I see, uh, I mentioned the uh, inward-looking uh, political class of Paris. Uh, I see the, the danger for Europe, there, uh, and particularly for French-German relationship, that the French society, in a certain way, is in a blockade. Uh, France is not able to make the necessary steps to reform uh, the, uh, its economy and uh, the social status. All governments, whether they are from the left or from the right, fear the street. 
this is uh, very clear and uh, uh, so uh, unemployment in France is rising and uh, what you can gain in industry is uh, the Germans have the double value of the French. 26% uh, uh, of uh, our national wealth is coming from industrial production in France, only half of it. And I fear that this gap is widening. Have I still time left? Some minutes? A few minutes. A few minutes, yeah, I hurry up. Um, more important for me are the changes in uh, demography. This is for me the most serious problem uh, in, in Europe. I give you two figures in the old European economic uh, community, we had 180,000 Muslims in the mid-80s. Now in the European Union, the figure is nearly 20 million. This is a massive change, which neither the governments nor the populations are realizing in their consequences. Uh, there is a tremblement de terre in the societies, but uh, it, Probably the biggest problem. And uh, this may bring us, uh, France and Germany, in different directions. Uh, migration for France is coming from the Arab countries and from uh, uh, Francophonie Africaine. And uh, the Germans are getting the people from Turkey. These are two completely different directions. We have in Germany now three million uh, Turks or uh, Many of them have uh, passports now, but uh, three million. And uh, foreign population in Germany within a very short period is up to 12% at a population of uh, 82 million now. And uh, in big cities, uh, Berlin, uh, other big towns, every second child uh, now is born from a family where one or two uh, parents uh, have a migration background. So a uh, big challenge uh, to bring uh, those people uh, into the uh, society in, term, in terms that the society is functioning. By the way, uh, the, uh, the Berlin airport problem uh, has to do with it. When you have not uh, a working force from, from one single country, but from 70, 80 nations, uh, you must construct much more simple. You cannot be that sof uh, sophisticated like the Germans want to be, uh, and every day on the airport five changes in construction. This cannot work. Uh, and you can see that uh, it is a problem for population. Uh, there was a, a book last year from a former member of the Berlin government, Sarrazin. Uh, he wrote a book with the title Germany is on the way to disappear, meaning uh, these changes through uh, demography. Uh, uh, nearly two million copies of the book were sold. This year, uh, uh, from Berlin, from a district, uh, a mayor wrote uh, a similar book, Buschkowski, uh, 200,000 copies within several weeks. So you see, it's a real concern for the population and uh, a good uh, part of my colleagues in, in the German national press says these are right-wing arguments, don't listen to them. I find it's a grave mistake not to uh, uh, allow open discussion. Okay, I finish here on demography and I come to the end of my, uh, my, of my remarks. Uh, Germany and France as nations uh, are undergoing deep changes and uh, nobody knows uh, where this will uh, end up. It's a risk and uh, it's an opportunity, but you have to, to form it. Uh, just to wait and, uh, and to let, uh, let it happen will not uh, keep the alliance uh, the way it, uh, it worked over a period of 50 years. The French have uh, make a point uh, saying that only cooperation can organize uh, the future of Europe in the world. I agree to it. The Germans has, have to accept the military role also in the future. And uh, let me finish with Giscard and Helmut Schmidt. They met recently 
And they came to the conclusion that no, of, no country of, of the two can lead, but there is an obligation to work together. Thank you.